It's time for an indictment. An indictment from the uh, Fulton Superior Court. Uh, the state of Georgia versus... Uh, we'll, we'll go through the whole list a little later, but um, Donald J. Trump. Are we going to be able to understand this? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to skip through uh, some of this here because they'll explain a lot of this later. But this is just... Uh, that was not nice. You're fine. You're fine. You're right down there. Hey, Willow. Hey, Willow. Where's Kitty? See? You're fine. <laughs> You're doing just fine. Um, anyways, so if you feel like reading along with the indictment, which I 1000% do not recommend. Uh, I thought I had a button, a button for the indictment. I guess I knew not. Post the indictment. There you go. If you feel like reading along, which I do not suggest, there's the indictment. Uh, but there's a, the, the, here's all of the things. That was cool. <sighs> we need to watch some Beavis and Butthead, Kitty. Let's put that on the, uh, let's put that on the agenda. I like how perjury, <laughs> perjury is thrown in right here at the end. Like it's, <laughs> I don't even think uh, Old Orange was uh, done with perjury, was he? No. He, you can see here on the left, um, like Donald J. Trump, he was not included with all of these. Uh, Rudy wasn't. Mark Meadows only got two of them. So there's like a whole bunch of different charges for a bunch of uh, different people. Anyways, um, like I said, the first 10 pages, not really a lot to go into here. A whole lot of these are just... Uh, spaces for the defendant waves copy of indictment list of witnesses formal arraignment and pleads not guilty or guilty so I I don't know why they put that in the beginning also what's interesting um, is that it included a list of the uh, grand jury I think in Georgia it is why am I on the desk Look, they uh, it's unsealed so you can see everybody who was in the grand jury which if you're into that sort of thing so I don't know why that's public knowledge. I feel like that's kind of a, defeats the purpose of the, you know, secrecy. I don't know. Is it something that needs to be secret? I am not a lawyer. I never purported to be a lawyer. Uh, anybody who says that I'm a lawyer is a gosh darn liar. And not even a lawyer either. Count one uh -uh, of 41. The grand jurors aforesaid in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia do hereby charge and accuse. It's a whole list of names, isn't it? Hey, Willow. Hey, Willow. Read this. Read this. You didn't want to read anything today. Fine. I'll do it. This is the only time I'm going to read this, this whole list of names. I'm going to not screw with the voice commands. I'm sorry. I need to get that cemented before I play with those. Donald J. Trump. Donald John Trump. Rudolph William Louis Giuliani. Or good old Rudy. Uh, John Charles Eastman. No idea who that is. Mark Randall Meadows. Uh, Trump's former chief of staff. Kenneth John Chisborough. Cheeseboro. Don't know who that is. Jeffrey Bosert Clark. Nope. Jenna Lynn Ellis, one of uh, Trump's former uh, attorneys. Ray Stalling Smith III. No clue. Robert David Cheely. No clue. Michael A. Roman. Uh, in fact, looking through this list, I'll let you know when I recognize somebody. <laughs> Michael A. Roman. David James Schaefer. Sean Micah Tresher Still. Stephen Cliffgard Lee. Harrison William Prescott Floyd. Sounds like a chode. Trevian C. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not a legal opinion. Trevian C. Cuddy. Sydney Catherine Pell. <laughs> a big round of applause. The, the Kraken has entered the building. <laughs> Sydney Pell is finally on an, endowment, an indictment. Kathleen Alston Latham. Scott Graham Hall and Misty Hampton with the offense of violation of the Georgia RICO or Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act. Akja. 
For the said accused individually and as persons concerned in the commission of a crime and together with unindicted co-conspirators in the state of Georgia and county of Fulton on or between these two days, November 4th and uh, September 15th, 2022, excuse me, November 4th, 2020 and the 15th of September, 2022, while associated with an enterprise unlawfully conspired and endeavored to conduct and participate in directly and indirectly such enterprise bear with me for a second such enterprise through a pattern of racketeering activity and violation as shown and is described below and incorporated as reference as if fully set forth herein contrary to the laws of said state the good order peace and dignity thereof now let me tell you something real quick before we go any further um, our friend, um, Stacey Abrams is very wordy and this, she loves this. Um, what is it? Concern, like, concerned and conspiracy of a crime and things like this, uh, fully set herein, contrary to the laws of said state is repeated probably a hundred times and i'm not repeat oh god roar tv <laughs> and i'm not repeating it every time so in the future if if i see something wherein i see that she is being extremely unnecessarily wordy i'm going to ring the bell and that bell is going to indicate hey stacy abrams doesn't like donald trump very much for good reason for good reason don't get me wrong but uh, that's my way of saying the this is all not extremely necessary to the plot. This is just uh, legally is saying Donald Trump did illegal things. I am not a lawyer. Introduction. Defendant Donald John Trump lost the United States presidential election held on November 3rd, 2020. One of the states he lost was Georgia, Georgia. Trump and the other defendants charged in this indictment refused to accept that Trump lost and they knowingly and willfully joined a conspiracy to unlawfully change the outcome of the election in favor of Trump. That conspiracy contained a common plan and purpose to commit two or more acts of racketeering activity in Fulton County, Georgia, elsewhere in the state of Georgia, and other states. At all times relevant to the count of this indictment, the defendants, as well as others not named as defendants, unlawfully conspired and endeavored to conduct and participate in a criminal enterprise in Fulton, Georgia, and elsewhere, which is what you just said. Defendants Donald John Trump and everyone we just mentioned, as shown here, um, unindicted co-conspirators, individuals one through individual 30, and others known and unknown to the grand jury, constituted a criminal organization whose members and associates engaged in various related criminal activities, including, but not limited to, false statements in writing, impersonating a public officer, forgery, filing false documents, and influencing witnesses, computer theft, computer trespass, computer invasion of privacy, conspiracy to, infraud, to defraud the state, acts involving theft, and perjury. This criminal organization constituted an enterprise as that term is defined in OCJA, 16.14.3, that is a group of individuals associated in fact. The defendant and other members and associates of the enterprise had connections uh, and relations with one another and with the enterprise. The enterprises constituted an ongoing organization whose members and associates frozen. What's frozen? Oh, what happened? Why are we frozen? What's going on? Something happened. We lost a lot of frames there. Sorry, it seems to be back to normal. If the, if the screen freezes and, and the audio just goes on, it means I just dropped a bunch of frames. We seem to be back to normal, though. Uh, blah, 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 blah. This enterprise operated in Fulton County, Georgia, elsewhere in Georgia and other states, including but not limited to Arizona, Michigan, Nevada, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, and in the District of Columbia. This enterprise operated for a period of time sufficient to permit its members and associates to pursue its objectives. 
The manners and methods used by the defendants and other methods and associates of the enterprise to further their goals and to achieve its purposes included the following. I'm going to just paraphrase things that are not necessary. I'm going to use my English degree. I promise I will not I will not uh I will not remove any facts that are important to the uh, indictment. Members of the Enterprise, including several of the defendants, appeared at hearings in Fulton County, Georgia, before members of the General Assembly of Georgia on December 3rd, 2020, December 10th, 2020, and December 30th, 2020. At these hearings, members of the Enterprise made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3rd, 20 present, 2020 presidential election. The purpose of these false statements was to persuade Georgia legislatures to reject lawful electoral votes cast by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from Georgia. Members of the Enterprise corruptly solicited Georgia legislatures to instead to unlawfully appoint their own presidential electors for the purpose of casting electoral votes for, pres uh, for Donald Trump. Members of the Enterprise also made false statements to state legislatures during hearings and meetings in Arizona, Michigan, and Pennsylvania in November and uh, December 2020 to persuade legislatures in those states to unlawfully appoint their own presidential electors. So, gosh, darn illegal. Hold on. One second. There we go. Okay. Need to push one button real fast. Best. Excellent. Okay. Members of the Enterprise, including several of the defendants, hi Micah, made false statements in Fulton County and elsewhere in the state of Georgia, including the governor, the secretary of state, and the speaker of the House of Representatives. Micah, guess what? Trump got indicted again. Where's my, where's my confetti? There it is. Members of the Enterprise also corruptly solicited Georgia officials, including the Secretary of State and Secretary of the House of Rep uh, uh, Speaker of the House of Representatives, to violate their oath to the Georgia Constitution and to the United States Constitution by unlawfully changing the outcome of the presidential election in Georgia in favor of Donald Trump. Members of the Enterprise also made false statements to and solicited state officials in Arizona, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Members of the Enterprise created false electoral college documents and recruited individuals to convene and cast false electoral college votes at the Georgia State Capitol in Fulton County on November 14th. Is that the phone call? Oh, it, that, that will come up, I'm sure. It happened in Georgia, so yes, that is a thousand percent part of this indictment. After the false electoral college votes were cast, members of the Enterprise transmitted the votes to the President of the United States Senate, the Archivist of the United States, the Georgia Secretary of State, and the Chief Judge of the United States District Court for the Northern District of Georgia. The false, date, the false documents were intended to disrupt and delay the joint session of Congress on January 6th in order to unlawfully change the presidential election results in favor of Trump. Similar schemes were executed by members of the Enterprise in Arizona, Michigan, Nevada, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Members of the Enterprise falsely accused Fulton County election worker Ruby Freeman of committing election crimes in Fulton County, Georgia. Yeah, there's a lot to it. It's a 98 pages long. <laughs> so, so long. These false uh, these false accusations also hydrant coaster. These false accusations were repeated to Georgia legislators and other Georgia officials in an effort to persuade them to unlawfully change the outcome of the presidential election in favor of Trump. In furtherance of this scheme, members of the enterprise traveled from out of state to harass Freeman, uh, intimidate her, and solicit her to falsely confess to election crimes that she did not commit. It's just. It's just mob rule. It's just like the mafia just going around and like, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not making any personal statements. Members of the Enterprise corruptly solicited high-ranking uh, United States Department of Justice officials to make false statements to government officials in Fulton County, Georgia, including the governor, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, and the President pro temperate of the Senate. In one instance, Donald Trump stated to the acting United States Attorney General, Just say that the election was corrupt and leave the rest to me and the Republican congressman. Members of the Enterprise corruptly solicited the Vice President of the United States to violate the United States Constitution. Oh, there's 
that's the problem, Micah, is that so many people are not familiar with it, including me. Including this is a lot of this. I followed it so closely at the time, and some of this is definitely going to be news to me. Uh, by, do, 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 by unlawfully rejecting electoral college votes cast in Fulton County, Georgia, by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors of Georgia. Members of the enterprise also corruptly solicited the vice president to reject votes cast by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from several other states. Members of the Enterprise corruptly conspired in Fulton County, Georgia and elsewhere to unlawfully access secure voting equipment and voter data. In Georgia, members of the Enterprise stole data, including uh, ballot images, voting equipment, software, and personal voter information. The stolen data was then distributed to other members of the Enterprise, including members in other states. See, here's the thing, Micah, and anybody else who doesn't really know a ton about American politics, is that Georgia is in, was for years always seen in, in America as extremely Southern, extremely red. Like, if Trump can win anywhere, it's going to be Georgia. And then Trump, Trump won. And he did all those things that he did. And then he lost in Georgia. And it was dramatically amazing. And nobody, I don't think anybody really expected it, except for like the people who make their whole careers uh, studying politics. I'm sure that some, I, at the time people were saying it's definitely a chance. But me being completely cynical to protect my own self knew that it was just going to go red. I was wrong. Georgia has really impressed me. Members of the Enterprise, including several of the defendants, filed false documents, made false statements to government investigators, and committed perjury in judicial proceedings in Fulton County, Georgia, and elsewhere uh, in furtherance of and to cover up the conspiracy. Okay. <laughs> This is where you're going to start hearing the bells. Like at the end of every single act, she includes the sp like an overt act and in furtherance to the conspiracy, which I'm not repeating a hundred times. As part of and on behalf of criminal enterprise detailed above, the defendants and other members of the associates of the enterprise committed overt acts to affect the objectives of the enterprise, including but not limited to. Uh, but we looked quite a bit into 2016 polling. The polling, I'm going to be real, Micah, the polls are so wildly inaccurate these days, no matter what. They And, and honestly, politics are changing, dramatically changing. Cool. <laughs> I'll look at the VOD and it will I'll just have me live that whole time. Like there it goes. It's back up again. I'm back up. Woo! Look at that. This is, uh, OBS is fixed. The internet's bad. <laughs> Sorry about that. Alright. Act one. On or about the fourth day of November 2020, no uh, Donald John Trump made a nationally televised speech falsely declaring victory in the election. Approximately four days earlier, on no October 31st, Trump discussed a, gra a draft speech with uh, co-conspirator Individual One, who goes unindicted, whose, individual, whose identity is known to the grand jury that falsely declared victory and falsely claimed voter fraud. The speech was an overt act in con furtherance to the conspiracy. There we go. There's every other time I say, uh, she's going to say that, I'm ringing the bell. Act 2. On or about the 15th of November 2020, Rudy Giuliani placed a telephone call to unindicted conspirator 2 uh, and left an approximately 83 second long voicemail message for co-conspirator 2. Wait, what? Rudy left a voicemail message for co-conspirator 2 making statements concerning fraud on November 3rd on, uh, for the infections of fraud. Bell. On or about the 19th day of November uh, 2020, Rudy, Jenna Ellis, and Sidney Powell, unindicted conspirator three, uh, all appeared at a press conference at the Republican National Committee headquarters on behalf of Trump and Donald J. Trump for president. The Trump campaign, excuse me, the Trump campaign. 
Uh, and made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3rd presidential election in Georgia and elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, obviously, this is a, this it, it's a expanded in the rules per se, but uh, don't bring it up unless I bring it up, which obviously I'm bringing it up right now. So typically, yeah, but uh, this is a different case. Also, hi. Act four, on or about the 20th day of November 2020, uh, David Schaefer sent an email to unindicted conspirator four, whose identity is known to the grand jury and other individuals. In the email, David Schaefer stated that Scott Hall, a Georgia bail bond, a Georgia bail bondsman, has been looking into the election on behalf of the president at request of David Bossie and asked unindicted conspirator four to exchange contact information with Scott and to help him as needed. Ding. You barely remember where there was a Huffington Post poll which said Trump's going to lose with 98 probability. The pollsters did a podcast where they were trashing Nate Silver. Everybody was trashing everybody in, uh, in 2015, 2016. I'm going to be real. I didn't expect Trump to win. Nobody did. I mean, the pollsters did. Like, people who... Like, let me get this... The, the general public, I could say, which I was a thousand percent a part of in 2015, 2016, did not expect Donald Trump to win. That everything has changed, uh, politically speaking, in the last seven years. On or about the 20th day of November... Trump and Mark Meadows met with Majority Leader of the Michigan Senate Michael Shirky, Speaker of the Michigan House of Representatives Lee Chatfield, and other Michigan legislatures in the Oval Office at the White House, and Trump made false statements concerning fraud in the election in Michigan. Giuliani joined this meeting by telephone. Ding. On or about the 21st day of November 2020, Mark Randall Meadows sent a text message to United States Representative Scott Perry from Pennsylvania and stated, Can you send me the number for the speaker and the leader of the PA legislature? POTUS wants to chat with them. This is what... I'm, this is my... Um, I'm going to be real. I, I have full faith in this indictment, but it seems like some of this... Like, I've, no, I've just sort of scanned through some of these acts, and some of them are just like, hey, Mark Meadows sent a text message. It's like, okay, um, what does that mean, though? I mean, did he send it, like, do we have a copy of what that means? Are we going to learn about what that means? Because we can't just say it's part of the conspiracy if we just said he just sent a text message. Don't get me wrong. I have no faith that they were acting in good, you know, acting well, but... Just saying. Uh, turns out he was among the accurate posters of 2020. The posters were saying it was close to some of the important swing states. And I, I'm going to be honest, though. All the people who think they knew about politics are, I think, going to vastly underestimate Gen Z. And the people who really do know politics, I think, are understanding that the new generations are not liking what they're seeing. <laughs> Uh, where were we? Um, here we go. On the 22nd day of uh, November, Donald John Trump and Rudy, uh, Rudy Giuliani placed a telephone call to Speaker of the Arizona House of Representatives, Russell Rusty Bowers. During the telephone call, Giuliani made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3rd presidential election in Arizona and solicited... Right, a pilot was involved in the first aircraft accident. His passenger, a Frenchman, was killed. Sora. <laughs> Sora. <laughs> I think it's very clear he lost. He got, uh, he got elected after not winning the popular vote. He did not have a high profile vote. I was up for vote. Agreed. I and I think he. I think he won in 2016. I think a lot of people really. I did. Are looking back at a lot of people on the left. Um, who spent a good long time thinking about fraud and whatnot. And I don't know enough about, and I'm not claiming any sort of interference or whatnot. I don't have that information. I'm just a dumbass on the internet. Hi, Truby. Look at that kitty. Oh, there it goes. There's that kitty. I just read it where I see it. And I just know that in 2020, a lot of people saw a lot of bad stuff. They, they, he lost the job 100% that time. Um, 
made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3rd presidential election in Arizona and solicited, requested, and importuned Bowers to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Arizona. Bowers declined and later testified to the United States House of Representatives Select Committee to investigate the January 6th attack on the Capitol that he told Donald J. Trump, I would not break my oath. The false statements and solicitations were overt acts in the furtherance of the conspiracy. Ding. Uh, the 2016 pollsters predict a few percent I don't see anyone could be so confident it's going to be I am going to say it's going to be interesting times I'm not looking forward to next year no matter what happens on or about the 25th day of November 2020 Rudy Giuliani and Jenny Ellis appeared spoke and presented witnesses as a meeting of Pennsylvania legislatures in Gettysburg Pennsylvania during the meeting Giuliani made false statements concerning fraud and solicited requested and importuned the legislature's president at the meeting to unlawfully appoint electors of from Pennsylvania during the meeting, Jenny, Jenna Ellis did the same thing. Donald J. Trump joined the meeting by telephone, made false statements concerning fraud, and did the same thing again. Dink. <laughs> Stop copying and pasting, please. <laughs> it's like, this is why this thing's 98 pages long. On or about the 25th day of November 2020, immediately after the meeting of the legislators in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, um, Donald J. Trump invited a group of the Pennsylvania legislatures and others to meet with him at the White House. Later that day, Trump, Mark Meadows, Rudy Giuliani, Jenna Ellis, and unindicted conspirators five and six uh, met with a group of Pennsylvania legislatures and uh, discussed them holding a special session of the General Assembly. All right, see you later, William. On or about the 26th day of November 2020, uh, Rudy Giuliani and Jenna Ellis placed a telephone call to Speaker of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives Brian Cutler and left Cutler a voicemail message for the purpose of soliciting, requesting, and importuning him to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Pennsylvania. Ding. On or about the 26th day of November 2020, Rudy Giuliani placed a telephone call to President Pro Temperate of the Pennsylvania Senate Jacob Jake, I love these, uh, I love these, like, uh, when they get to the, uh, nicknames, where it's like, you feel like you're doing sports. <laughs> da -da -da -da. Pennsylvania Senate State Jacob Jake Corman for the purpose of soliciting. <laughs> I just like, can we just have their official name, please? Although maybe they want to make sure we know who they're talking about. That's fair. Requesting and importuning Corman to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Pennsylvania. Ding, ding, ding. On or about the 27th day of November 2020, Rudy Giuliani and Jenna placed a telephone call to the Speaker of Pennsylvania Representatives Brian Cutler and left Cutler a message of the exact same thing from the last act. Dang. On or about the 27th day, Rudy sent a, uh, placed a telephone call to the President Toad Temperate of the Pennsylvania Senate Jake Corman for the exact same thing. Dang. <laughs> Stop. This doesn't look extra impressive like just wait a second this is the same act yeah no wonder it's no wonder it looks the same <laughs> or maybe yeah that's gonna be a problem that's gonna this is gonna cause like two weeks of delay this this one stupid typo um, on or about the 27th day of November Donald J Trump placed a telephone call to the uh, to Jake uh, for the exact same reason as the ones before on or about the 28th day of November, Rudy Giuliani uh, called Brian Cutler and left him a message. Again, how many times did they call? <laughs> Brian Cutler, Jake Corman, Jake Corman again. They left, they called these people like six times. On or about the 29th day of November, uh, Rudy Giuliani placed a telephone call uh, to Brian Cutler again <laughs> for the exact same thing. It's like, my goodness, they were desperate. On or about the 30th of November, Rudy Giuliani and Jenna Ellis appeared, spoke, and presented witnesses at a meeting of Arizona legislators in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, conspirators 5 and 6 uh, were also president. During the meeting, Giuliani made false statements concerning fraud and in Arizona and solicited for Arizona legislators to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Arizona. Jenna Ellis did the same thing, and Donald J. Trump made false statements concerning fraud. Dang. 
On or about the 30th of November, Michael A. Roman instructed unindicted conspirator seven to conduct and coordinate with individuals associated with the Trump campaign to co contact state legislatures in Georgia and elsewhere on behalf of Trump and to encourage them to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from their respective states. See, here's the scary thing. They knew that this was going to be like they knew what this was what they needed to do this yeah this is the most recent one jagan um they knew this was their only shot and their only shot was the hope that maybe a whole litany of right-wing politicians would be willing to throw away everything they've oathed on and they've done that plenty of times over the years but this is uh this is one of the big ones i guess maybe they didn't want to completely go uh, coup route. The Brexit vote in 16 made me interested in polling. Polling is only tangentially related to this. So that's fair. And and polling was uh, accounted big into 2020 because a lot of people thought the, that it was going to be a lot closer than it was because as crazy as 2020 was, um, it really wasn't that close. Like It was 8 million votes. On or between the first day of December 2020 and the 31st day of December 2020, Trump and Meadows met with John McEntee and requested that he prepare a memorandum outlining a strategy for disrupting and delaying the joint session of Congress on January 6th, the day prescribed by law for counting votes cast by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from Georgia or the other in the other states. Just to be clear, this is the January 6th attack on the Capitol. <laughs> Uh, that they're talking about in case that was not uh, straightforward. The strategy included having Vice President Michael R. Mike Pence count only half of the electoral votes from certain states and then return the remaining electoral votes to state legislatures. Ding. On or about the first day of December uh, 2020, Rudy Giuliani and Jenny Ellis, uh, Jenna Ellis, met with the Speaker of the Arizona House of Representatives, Rusty Bowers, President of the Arizona Senate, Karen Fan, and other Arizona legislatures in Phoenix. Uh, I, uh, who cares? If they, they mentioned that this uh, unindicted conspirator was there. I don't care. If he wasn't indicted, who cares? Shut up. Don't put, put it in there. During the meeting, Giuliani made false statements and solicited, requested, and importuned uh, them to cause and call a special session of the Arizona state legislatures. These were overt acts and the furtherance of conspiracy. Ding, da, da, ding, ding, ding. On or about the second day of December 2020, Giuliani and Jenna Ellis appeared, spoke, and presented witnesses at a meeting of the Michigan. <laughs> they just went all over the country, didn't they? Like, for two weeks, they did nothing but just travel from, like, red state to red state. Or, excuse me, purple state, I guess. During the meeting, Giuliani made false statements, did the same thing as he's been doing before. Jenna did the same thing as they were doing before. Ding. Um, on the 22nd act, we have something a little different, thankfully. <laughs> on or about the 3rd day of December 2020, uh, while the rest of the world was getting ready for Christmas, Donald John Trump caused to be tweeted. This is also a weird way she says he tweeted. From the Twitter account, Real Donald Trump, Georgia hearings now on OANN, amazing. This was an act of furtherance of the conspiracy. I'm not sure... This one should should have been struck in. No, that stricken. This one's not necessary. <laughs> Georgia hearings is on TV. I don't think was involved in the conspiracy. I'll be real here. On or about the third day of December 2020, Giuliani, John Eastman, Jenna Ellis, and Ray Stallings Smith III committed the felony offense of solicitation of violation of oath by public officer. Uh, by unlawfully soliciting, requesting, and importuning certain public officers from acting as elected members of the Georgia Senate and present at a Senate Judiciary Subcommittee meeting, including unindicted conspirator 8, whose identity is known, all the people shown here. Dang. I think like 12 or 13 of them are tweets, which doesn't sound like enough. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's also still other, you know, there's, but all, there's always more indictments coming. <laughs> On or about the third day of December 2020, Giuliani committed the felony offense of false statements and writings 
uh, by knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making at least one of the following false statements and representations to members of the Georgia Senate present at the Senate Judiciary Committee. Look at this crap. This is the funny thing. It's like they just spout straight lies. And I'm not a lawyer. I'm not, I'm not a lawyer, but they're just spouting things that have zero evidence. Like, I'm not saying they're lying, but they've never had any evidence ever. So once they tell me some evidence, I will be happy to see what they have to show. Honor about He said that at least 96,000 mail-in ballots were counted in the uh, November 3rd presidential election, despite there being no record of those ballots having been returned to a county elections office. And he also mentioned that the Dominion voting systems used in the November 3rd elections in Antrim County, Michigan, mistakenly recorded 6,000 votes for Biden when the votes were actually cast for Donald John Trump. Said statements being within the jurisdiction of the office of the Georgia Secretary of State, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, etc., etc., etc. This was an act of racketeering activity and is an overt act of furtherance to the dang. Next, Act 25. On or about the third day of December 2020, Ray Stallings Smith committed the felony offense of false statements and writings in violation of that in Fulton County, Georgia, by knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making at least one. <laughs> no, that's just funny. <laughs> he made at least one of these statements. We're trying to figure out which one, but he made one of them, gosh darn it. He said, at least one of these, that 2,506 felons voted illegally in the election, that 66,248 underage people illegally registered to vote before their birthdays prior to the election, that at least 2,423 people voted in the election who are not registered or enlisted to register to vote, that 1,043 people voted in the election who had illegally registered to vote using a post office box, that 10,000, are we, are we counting this up? That 10,315 or more dead people voted in the election. And finally, that Fulton County election workers at the State Farm Arena ordered poll watchers and members of the media to leave the area of tabulation on the night of November 3rd and continued to operate after ordering everyone to leave. Said statements are ding ding ding. Act 26. On or about the 3rd of day of December 2020, Donald John Trump caused the following to be tweeted from his account. Wow, blockbuster testimony taking... I do a terrible John Trump. Blockbuster testimony taking place right now in Georgia. Ballot stuffing by Dems when Republicans were forced to leave the large counting room. Plenty more coming, but this alone leads to an easy win of the state. Dang! On or about the third day of December 2020, the same day, Donald John Trump tweeted, People in Georgia got caught cold bringing in massive numbers of ballots and putting them in voting machines. Great job, Brian Kemp, Georgia. Dang! Act 28. On or about the third day of December 2020, Donald John Trump, yeah, sorry for Donald Trump, met with the Speaker of Pennsylvania House of Representatives Brian Cutler in the Oval Office in the White House and discussed holding discussed holding a special session of the Pennsylvania General Assembly. Ding. On or about the third day of December. This is a, the third day of December was very busy. And the 20 on or about the third day of December and the 26th day of December, Rudy Giuliani placed a telephone call to President Pro Temperate of the Georgia State Senate Cecil Terrell Butch Miller for the purpose of making false statements concerning fraud in the presidential election. Thing. On or about the 23rd, the tw on or between the 3rd day of December and the 26th day of December, Donald J. Trump placed a telephone call to the presidential pro temperate of the uh, Senator Butch again. Just say that. On or about the 5th of December, Donald John Trump placed a telephone call to Georgia Governor Brian Kemp and solicited, requested, and importuned him to call a central. I call a general session. It's like a word twister. On the 6th day of December, Trump caused the following to be tweeted from his Twitter account. Gee, what a surprise. Has anyone formed the so-called, says he has no power to do anything, Governor Brian Kemp and his puppet, Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan, and they could easily solve this mess. And when? 
Signature verification and call a special session. So easy. Dang. On or about the 6th day of December 2020, Sydney Pell, a big round of applause for Sydney Pell for showing up again, entered into a written engagement uh, with Sullivan Strickler LLC, a forensic data firm. Sydney Pell was basically the uh, Urkel. Like every time Sydney Pell comes in, she talks about the Kraken and the audience cheers and laughs. A forensic data firm located in Fulton County, Georgia, for the performance of computer forensic collections and analytics on Dominion voter systems, equipment in Michigan and elsewhere. This unlawful breach of election equipment in Coffee County, Georgia, was subsequently performed under this agreement. Ding. On or about the 6th day of December 2020, Robert David Cheely sent an email to John Charles Eastman, unindicted conspirator 8. Uh, in Georgia Senate, Brandon Beach, that stated, I am working on setting up a call for you with the Speaker and the President Pro Temperate tomorrow. I am also making the leadership aware of the importance of Trump electors to meet on December 14th. Please provide the citation of the requirements of the duties from which they must comply with. On or about the 6th day of December 2020, John Eastman sent an email to Robert David Cheely. Um, and also number eight again, and Brandon Beach, and stated that Trump presidential elector nominees in Georgia needed to meet on December 14th, sign six sheets of certificate to vote, and mail them to the president of the Senate and to other officials. Dang. On or about the sixth day of December 2020, Robert David Cheely sent an email to unindicted conspirator 2 that stated he'd been speaking to John Eastman and was attempting to set up a call with uh, David Ralston and Butch Miller to encourage them to call a special session of the Georgia General Assembly. In the email, Rob stated, President, uh, Professor Eastman told me tonight that it is critical that the 16 electors for President Trump meet next Monday and vote in accordance with 3 U.S.C. 7. In the email, Robert David Cheely further stated, I, can, I assume you can make sure this happens. Dang. On the 7th of December, unindicted conspirator 2 sent an email to Robert and David that stated, Bob, can you get on... You're in working in government. Can you please be a bit more professional? Bob, can you get on a call with David Schaefer, state GOP chair, and I later this morning to discuss? How much time does he save with that one U? David has been on top of a lot of efforts in the state. I get off of a board call around 1030. Ding. On the 7th day of December, Giuliani caused to be tweeted from his Twitter account a retweet of unindicted conspirator 8 that stated, Georgia Patriot call to action. Today is the day we need you to call your state senate and house reps and ask them to sign the petition for this special session. We must have free and fair elections in Georgia, and this is the only path to ensuring every legal vote is counted. Donald J. Trump. On the 7th of December, John Eastman sent an email to Giuliani with the attached memorandum titled The Real Deadline for Settling a State's Electoral Votes. The body of the email stated, Here's the memo we discussed. The memorandum was written by Kenneth che Cheesebro to an attorney associated with the Trump campaign, James Troupas, and advocates for a position that Trump presidential elector nominees in Wisconsin should meet and cast electoral votes for Trump, despite the fact that Trump lost the presidential election in Wisconsin. Ding! On the 7th of December, Trump requested that Bill White, an associate uh, in, uh, who was with the Trump campaign and residing in Fulton County, provide him with information, including contact information for majority leader of the Georgia Senate, Mike Dugan, and uh, Butch Miller. The following day, White sent an email containing the requested information to Giuliani and others. Uh, ding. On the 7th of December, Giuliani placed a telephone call and uh, requested holding a special session, etc. On the 7th of December, Donald John Trump committed the felony offense of solicitation of violation of oath by public officer and violation of that code in Fulton County, Georgia by unlawfully soliciting, requesting, and importuning uh, David Ralston, a public officer, to engage in conduct constituting the felony offense of violation of oath by a public officer by calling a special session of the Georgia General Assembly for the purpose of unlawfully appointing presidential electors from Georgia and willful and intentional violation of the terms of oath of said person as prescribed by law with intent that said person engage in said conduct. 
Are unindicted co-conspirators just random people on Twitter? Possibly people already arrested for January 6th? That's possible. I mean, in theory, they could be like literally anybody. They're just people that are not notated in this particular indictment. I assume they just aren't going to mention their names if they're not included in the indictment. But, I mean, it would take about four seconds to research who those people are. I think it's less of a privacy and more just a legal thing. On the 8th of December, uh, Trump placed a telephone call to Chris Carr, Georgia Attorney General, for the purpose of making false statements concerning fraud in the election in Georgia and elsewhere. During the telephone call, Trump asked Carr not to discourage other state attorney generals from joining a federal lawsuit filed by the state of Texas contesting the administration of the election in Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Just not actively on Trump staff, probably. It's possible, yeah. They could be like it could be anybody. Um, could be could be what's his name? Take a drink real quick while I think of it. Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro. It could even be Ben Shapiro. It might not be. This one looks boring. <laughs> On the 8th of December, Trump and Eastman placed a telephone call to Ronald McDaniel. Maybe it's just the storm. There we go. I'm back. Sorry. Um, stupid thing is bad. Uh, where are we? Ronald McDaniel, yes. On or about the 8th day of December 2020, if that go happens again, maybe I'll try and switch servers. Michael Roman sent... To, actually, maybe I'll switch servers uh, when I need to take a break. Sent a text message to unindicted conspirator 4, stating that he'd spoken to Misty Hampton and asked for to get Misty Hampton to attend the hearing before the Georgia House of Representatives Government Affairs Committee on December 10th. Dang. On or about the 9th day of December, Kenneth Cheesebro wrote a memorandum titled Statutory Requirements for December 14th Electoral Votes to James R. Troupas, an attorney associated with Donald uh, J. Trump's campaign. The memorandum provides detailed state-specific instructions for how Trump presidential elector nominees in Georgia, Arizona, Michigan, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin should meet and cast electoral votes for Trump, despite the fact that Trump lost those elections Ding! On or about the 10th day of December 2020, Cheesebro sent an email to the Georgia Republican Party chair, uh, Chairman Schaefer, James, uh, excuse me, David James Schaefer, and, uh, and, and uh, Conspirator 9, um, Kenneth Cheesebro, stated in the email that certain individuals associated with, associated with the Trump campaign asked him to coordinate with the five contested states to help with the logistics of electors in other states, hopefully joining and casting their votes on Monday. Just more and more, just racketeering, just stupid, crazy racketeering. On or about the 10th day of December 2020, Cheesebro sent an email with attached documents to Schaefer and other unindicted conspirators. The documents were to be used by the Trump presidential elector nominees in Georgia for the purpose of casting electoral votes for Trump. Despite the fact that Trump lost the election, <laughs> she, she loves repeating this over and over. And I love how petty it is. It, I, I'm here for it. On or about the 10th, Cheesebro sent an email with attached documents to the Arizona Republican Party Executive Director, Greg, and others. These documents were to be used for the exact same thing as the last time, dang. On or about the 10th day of December, Cheesebro sent an email to the Party of Wisconsin. Wisconsin for the exact same thing. Um, let's see. So here we go. Can we just speed run a couple of these? Um, she, on the 10th of December, Cheesebro sent it to Wisconsin chairman for the same thing of nominees. Ding. On the 10th of December, they sent it to Nevada um, saying that they'll reach out to you and the other Nevada electors to run point in the plan to have all of the electors transmit their votes on December 14th. Uh, this one was sent to Jim DeGraffenreid. The documents were to be used by Trump presidential electors for the purpose of collecting votes, despite the fact... <laughs> I wonder if this was individual. Like, maybe he didn't know how to CC people. Or maybe if this is another one of those legal things. Like, he's just separating them by act. Uh, act 52. They sent an email to the Republican Party of Pennsylvania, Thomas W. King III 
Documents were to be used for presidential fake electors in Pennsylvania. Ding. On the 10th of December, uh, sometime between the 10th and the 14th, David Schaefer contacted unindicted conspirator 2 by telephone and discussed his attendance at the 14th of December meeting with the presidential electors in uh, Fulton County, Georgia. On or about the 10th day of December 2020, Giuliani and Ray Stallings Smith III committed the felony offense of solicitation of violation of oath by public officer by unlawfully soliciting certain public officers then serving as elected officials in the Georgia House of Representatives, including all of the people mentioned here um, by unlawfully appointing presidential electors in willful and intentional violation of the terms of the oath of said person as prescribed by law. Dang. Act 56. On or about the 10th day of December 2020, Giuliani committed the felony offense of false statements and writings. Oh God, this is going to be a rough one. <laughs> rough statements and writings in violation of the uh, said vi here in Fulton County by knowingly making the at least one of the following false statements and representations to members of the Georgia House of Representatives present at a House Government Affairs Committee meeting. That it is quite clear from the State Farm Arena video that November 3rd that Ful Colton Fulton County election workers were stealing votes and that Georgia officials were covering up a crime in plain sight. That at the State Farm Arena, Democratic officials got rid of all the reporters, all of the observers, anyone that couldn't be trusted, used the excuse of a water main break, cleared out the voting area, and then went about their dirty, crooked business. I, I, I should go to YouTube and like find him saying this. Can you imagine Giuliani being all gruff and mad saying this? That between 12,000 and 24,000 ballots were illegally counted by Fulton County election workers at State Farm Arena on November 3rd. That in Michigan, there were more than 700,000 more ballots counted than were sent out to voters in the election which accounted for by quadruple counting votes. That Ruby Freeman, Shea Moss, and an unidentified man were quite obviously surreptitiously passing around USB ports as if they're vials of heroin or cocaine at the arena to be used to infiltrate the crooked Dominion voting machines. Possibly, I think they're just saying that, look, these are all real bad. If he's going to contest that he didn't say all of them, look, we're just saying he said at least one of these things. Like any one of these are pretty damning. That nine, maybe this is just to uh, like get away from him, like leaving more uh, excuses on the table. That 96,600 mail-in ballots were counted in the November 3rd, 2020 presidential election, despite there having no record of those ballots being returned to a county elections office. Said statements being within the jurisdiction, this was an act of racketeering uh, and is an overt act of furtherance in the conspiracy. Ding. Act 57, that on the 11th day of December 2020, David Schaefer reserved room 216 at the Georgia State Capitol in Fulton County, Georgia for the December 14th meeting of the Trump presidential electors in Fulton County, Georgia. On or about the 11th day of December 2020, Kenneth Cheesebro sent an... <laughs> Ken's back at work, he's sending more emails. Ken sent an email to Jim DeGraffenried and stated the purpose of having the electoral vote sent into Congress is to provide the opportunity to debate the election irregularities in Congress and to keep alive the possibility that the votes could be flipped to Trump because you just have no actual scruples. None. Not a goddamn scruple. Not one. On the 11th day of December, Cheesebro sent another email to, with attached documents to Greg Safston and others. The documents were to be used by the Trump presidential electors in Arizona for the purpose of casting electoral votes for Trump. Dang. Uh, Cheesebro sent another email with attached documents to Michael Roman and other individuals associated with the Trump campaign for the exact same reason as Act 59. On the 11th day of December 2020, Kenneth Cheesebro sent another email to Michael Roman uh, and a few other people for the exact same reason as Act 61. I'm not even giving you a ding for that one. 
On the 12th day of December 2020, David Schaefer contacted unindicted co-conspirator Individual 12 and discussed unindicted co-conspirator 12's attendance at the December 14th meeting. Ding. On the 12th day of December 2020, Michael A. Romans. Oh, Michael sending me emails now. To an unindicted co-conspirators 4 and 7 and other individuals associated with the Trump campaign. In the email, Michael Roman stated, I need a tracker for the electors and instructed individuals associated with the Trump campaign to populate entries on a shared spreadsheet. <laughs> Julia, Michael Roman pulled out Google Sheets. <laughs> no, we haven't seen anything about the, uh, nothing about the landscaping yet, or at least not that they've said specifically. Um, listing Trump presidential elector nominees in Georgia, Arizona, Michigan, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. The entries on the spreadsheet included contact information for the Trump presidential elector nominees. Would they include that in this? This is a Georgia specifically. Maybe. I'm not sure. Um, they have been mentioning like everybody else, so possibly. <laughs> The entries on this spreadsheet included contact information for the electoral nominees, whether the Trump presidential elector nominees had been contacted, and whether the Trump presidential elector nominees had confirmed they would attend the December 14th meetings of the Trump presidential elector nominees in their respective states, despite the fact that Trump lost the election. <laughs> on or about the 12th day of December 2020, oh, Ken's back with the, oh, no, no email today. Ken actually met with someone, met with Brian Schimming, and discussed the meeting uh, with Trump presidential elector nominees in Wisconsin. Giuliani joined the meeting by telephone and stated the media should not be notified of the December 14th meeting of Trump presidential electors in Wisconsin. Why do you think that? Why are you saying that, Rudy? Why, why don't you want them to know about it, Rudy? <laughs> Why, why didn't you want the media to know? <laughs> yeah, most likely not, but uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for it. On the 12th day of December 2020, Michael Roman dis, uh, instructed an individual associated with the Trump campaign to distribute certain information associated with the meeting on December 14th. Um, in Georgia, presidential nominees in Georgia, Arizona, Michigan, Nevada, uh, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, about the December 14th meeting. Yeah, I figured it was almost time for uh, Twitch to be uh, whining about ads. I think if it was here, it'd be earlier on. This was the increasing dates. I don't remember when that happened. Yeah, that was in like late November, wasn't it? Yeah, it would have happened by now. Let me do, let me get to Act 69 and then I'll, uh, I'll take a quick break, fill my, I'm going to make some coffee and then we'll, uh, plug the, we'll try and plug the rest of this. I need to get, do their stupid ads so I can not have pre-rolls. On or about the 12th day of December 2020, uh, the individual four sent an email to Michael Roman and David Schaefer with updates on the progress of organizing the meeting of Trump presidential nominees in uh, Fulton County, Georgia. The email stated which electoral nominees had confirmed they would attend the meeting, that other individuals had been secured in case some of the electoral nominees refused to participate, maybe because they had scruples that Georgia legislatures had been contacted to ensure access to the Georgia Capitol and that David Schaefer had reserved room to 216. David Schaefer is basically a secretary in all this. David Schaefer on the 12th of December sent an email to unindicted co-conspirator individual four advising them to touch base with each of the Trump presidential electors in advance of the meeting to confirm their attendance. Ding. On the 12th day of December, the individual four sent a text message with contact information for number eight. Uh, yeah, they, they, they shared contact information. Sure. Again, that doesn't, that feels like a weird act for racketeering, but you know, to each their own, uh, last one for now, uh, to, and then we'll take a little break on the 13th of December cheese bros. <laughs> so thank God we get to end on cheese bro sending an email, uh, with attachments to Michael Roman. The documents were to be used by Trump presidential elector nominees in New Mexico for the purpose of casting electoral votes, despite the fact that Donald J. Trump lost the election in New Mexico. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to make Twitch happy. I'm going to run their stupid ads. I'm going to make some coffee real quick. Go pee pee. I will be back. Um, 
I'm not sure. We were at page 38 out of 98. So whew, we'll, we'll see about this one. So I will be back in three minutes. Steepest main streets in Canada over a distance of two blocks. The street rises 80 feet. Jesus. All right, one second. All right, am I back? I'm back. Good. Okay, sorry about that. Act 70. I've got coffee now. Stir it real quick. Okay. Why is there a Okay, never mind. Don't worry about it. Act 70. On the 13th of December, Cheesebro sent an email to Giuliani with the subject Privileged and Confidential Brief Notes on the President of the Senate Strategy. In the email, Cheesebro outlined multiple strategies for disrupting and delaying the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2021, the day prescribed by law for counting votes in the... Okay, we know what January 6 is. In the email, we already talked about January 6. In the email, Cheesebro stated that the strategies outlined by him were preferable to allowing the Electoral Count Act to operate by its terms. Act 1 is November 4th. Act 2 is November 15th. <laughs> what is that sound? I keep hearing, I think my cat is making noise back there. On December 13th, 2020, Cheesebro sent an email with attached documents to Michael Roman and unindicted conspirator four. The documents were to be used by the electoral nominees for the purpose of casting votes. So same thing as before. I think I'll stop with the dinging. I think the dinging has reached its, uh, <laughs> it's no longer amusing. On the 13th day of December, 2020, Kenneth Cheesebro sent an email to Michael Roman uh, an unindicted conspirator for and stated that Giuliani wants to keep this quiet until after all the voting is done in reference to a December 14th meeting. That's definitely something. God, that's so damning. It's like we shouldn't tell the media about this until after the voting thing is taken care of. Let's just send our electoral voters. It'll be fine. On the 13th of December 2020, David Schaefer sent a text message to unindicted conspirator four and stated that conspirator eight 
would dis would attend the December 14th meeting in the place of a Trump presidential elector who refused to participate in the meeting. Good, someone with uh, someone with scruples. If there is one nice thing about all these indictments, it's reading about the about the people on the right who <sighs> at least in this one instance they did the right thing. I'm saying nothing else about them. Uh, on the 13th of December, Individual 9 sent a text message to David Schaefer and confirmed that he and, and uh, Individual 13th would attend the meeting on December 14th. On December 14th, Donald John Trump tweeted from his Twitter account, what a fool, Governor Brian. What a fool, Bri Governor Brian Kemp is. Could have been so easy, but now we have to do it the hard way. Demand this clown call a special session and open up signature verification now. Otherwise, this could be a bad day for two great senators on January 5th. That's definitely not damning or anything. On or about the 14th day of December 2020, David Schaefer sent a text message to Conspirator 4. Listen. Tell them to go straight to room 216 to avoid drawing attention to what we're doing. Uh. <laughs> Why would you put that in writing, you stupid idiot? <laughs> I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> On or about the 14th day of December 2020, Michael Roman sent an email to unindicted conspirators 4 and 7 whose identities were known to the grand jury and stated, please send me an update as soon as the state electoral college has adjourned and all paperwork is secured. On the 14th of December, 2020, Ray Stallings Smith III and David Schaefer encouraged certain individuals present at the meeting of Trump presidential electors in Fulton County, Georgia, to sign the document titled Certificate of the Votes of the 2020 Electors from Georgia. They didn't even add anything to say it's so damning. I don't know, Kitty. I really don't. On the 14th of December, 2020, David Schaefer, Sean Micah Thresher Still, Kathleen Alston Latham, and a whole assload of other people committed the felony offense of in person. Wait a second. They said that these unindicted conspirators all committed the felony offense, but I guess they're not indicting them. They're saying, yeah, they're guilty. We know they're guilty, but we're just not whatever. Oh, you know what they did? They probably got they probably got immunity. They probably got immunity for this. Um, a whole bunch of individuals committed the felony offense of impersonating a public officer by unlawfully falsely holding themselves out as the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from the state of Georgia, public officers with intent to mislead the president of the United States Senate, the archivist, all the people mentioned that we've heard before, into believing that they were actually such officers by placing in the United States mail to said persons a document titled Certificate of the Votes of the 2020 electors from Georgia. This was an act of racketeering activity, as stated here. On or about the 14th day of December 2020, a whole bunch of people, as mentioned before and stated here, uh, committed the felony offense of forgery in the first degree with that document, as mentioned before, a writing other than a check in such a manner that the writing was made purports to have been... What? Knowingly making the document mentioned before, a writing other than a check in such a manner that the writing as made purports to have been made by the authority of the duly elected. Okay, long story short, <laughs> they, they made forgery because of this thing they made. <laughs> this, this paper that they made was forgery because they said that it was from the electors of Georgia. That's, that's the really long and thin of what they're trying to say here. On the 14th of December, 2020, the individuals shown here were committed the felony offense of false statements and writings uh, for the same document mentioned before with knowledge that said document contained the false statement, we the undersigned being the duly elected and qualified electors of president, electors for president and vice president of the United States of America from the state of Georgia do hereby certify the following. Why would you sign that? Why would you sign that? Did they just assume that Trump would just, once he became president through all this, he would just say, oh, okay, you're all good. 
That's what he did, right? That was that was the only reason they signed this, right? On the 14th of December 2020, the electors mentioned previously and shown here attempted to commit the felony offense of filing false documents by trying to mail the document shown there addressed to Chief Judge shown here with intent to knowingly file, enter, and record said document in the Court of the United States, having reason to know that said document contained the, materials, the materially false statement uh, as previously mentioned, we the undersigned being duly elected. Some of them were definitely stupid enough to think they were elect the electors. They, I, I wonder what happened at that meeting. You would think that at that meeting they would have explained the ramification. No, they would. Of course, they wouldn't have explained the ramifications. Why would they have agreed to sign it? They're 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 dumb people. They're not. I, I don't think they were criminally stupid. At least not all of them. They were just stupid. On the 14th of December, David Schaefer and Sean Micah Thresher still committed the felony offense of forgery in the first degree with intent to defraud, knowingly making a document entitled Re Notice of Filling of Electoral College Vacancy, a writing other than a check in such a manner that the writing was purported to have the uh, authority of blah, 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 blah. They wrote a thing that was supposed to have been coming from the electors of the state of Georgia. It was not. This was an act of racketeering. Some of them criminally stupid, the rest just the regular kind. Fair enough. At least we see that some of them, definitely a lot of them seem to have taken the immunity, and some of them didn't go to it at all, which we got that going for them, at least. On the 14th of December, David Schaefer and Micah Schaefer, Micah, <laughs> David and Micah committed the felony offense of false statements and writings with the previously mentioned document with knowledge that said document contained the false statements that David Schaefer was chairman of the 2020 Georgia Electoral College meeting and Sean Micah Thresher still was secretary of the 2020 Georgia Electoral College meeting said document being within the jurisdiction blah 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 this was an act of racketeering activity and was an over act of conspiracy furtherance on the 14th of December a very busy day <laughs> this was the day of the meeting David Schaefer instructed unindicted conspirator 15 to deliver to the office of the governor of Georgia a document signed by David Schaefer and Sean Micah Thresher still titled Notice of Filling of Electoral College Vacancy. The document contained multiple false statements. On the 14th of December, unindicted conspirator 4 sent an email to Michael Roman, unindicted conspirator 7, and others that stated, All votes cast, paperwork complete, being mailed now. Ran pretty smoothly in reference to the December 14th meeting. On the 14th day of December, Clifford uh, Stephen Cliffgard Lee attempted to commit the felony offense of influencing witnesses in Fulton County, Georgia by traveling to the home. Oh, now we're getting juicy. Let's get getting some actual, like, oh shit, some stuff's actually happening now. By traveling to the home of Ruby Freeman, a Fulton County, Georgia election worker, and speaking to her neighbor with intent to knowingly engage in misleading conduct towards Ruby Freeman by purporting to offer her help and with intent to influence her testimony in an official proceeding at Fulton County, Georgia, concerning events at the State Farm Arena on November 3rd. This was an act of racketeering activity. On the 15th of de uh, December, Stephen Cliffgard Lee attempted to influence witnesses again by traveling to the home of Ruby Freeman, knocking on her door with intent to knowingly engage in misleading conduct by purporting to help basically the exact same thing. Is this just the next day? Yeah, the same thing the next day. On the 15th of December, and uh, sometime between the 15th of December and the 14th of January, Stephen solicited Harrison William Prescott Floyd uh, an individual associated with the organization Black Voices for Trump to assist with his effort to speak with Ruby Freeman, a Fulton County, Georgia election worker. Stephen stated to Harrison that Freeman was afraid to talk to Stephen because he was a white man. <laughs> so, so they got like, hey, you're black. You want to talk to her? That's basically exactly what Stephen Cliffgard Lee said. It's terrible. On or about the 18th day of December, Donald J. Trump met with Rudy Giuliani, Sidney Powell, unindicted conspirator 20, and others at the White House. The individuals present at the meeting discussed certain strategies and theories intended to influence the outcome of the November 3rd presidential election, including seizing voting equipment and appointing Sidney Powell as special counsel with broad authority to investigate allegations of voter fraud in Georgia and elsewhere. 
Sydney Powell has joined the party, everybody. <laughs> has rejoined. Sydney Powell took a little break. She went on vacation. She's back. On or about the 21st of December, Sydney Powell sent an email to the chief operating officers of Sullivan Strickler LLC and instructed him that she and unindicted conspirators 6, 21, and 22 were to immediately receive a copy of all data obtained by the LLC from Dominion Voting Systems Equipment in Michigan. On the 27th, the 22nd day of December, Mark Meadows traveled to the Cobb County Civic Center in Cobb County, Georgia, and attempted to observe the signature match audit being performed there by law enforcement officers from the Georgia Bureau of Investigation and the officer of the Georgia Secretary of State, despite the fact that the audit process was not open to the public. While present at the center, Mark Meadows spoke to the uh, Georgia Deputy Secretary of State, Jordan Fuchs, officer of the Georgia Secretary, Chief Investigator Francis Watson, and others mentioned who prevented Mark Meadows from entering into the space where the audit was being conducted. Again, another overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. On or about the 23rd day of December 2020, when the rest of America is getting ready for Santa to bring them a happy visit to their home, Donald J. Trump placed a telephone call to Officer of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State Chief Investigator Francis Watson that had previously been arranged by Mark Meadows. During the phone call, DJT falsely stated that he had won the presidential election in Georgia by hundreds of thousands of votes and stated to Watson that when the right answer comes out, you'll be praised. This is an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. On or about the 23rd day of December 2020, John Charles Freeman Eastman sent an email to Cheesebro, an unindicted individual, individual three, uh, with the subject, Forward Draft 2 with Edits. In the email, John Eastman attached a memorandum titled Privileged and Confidential, John, uh, December 23rd memo on January 6th scenario dot doc X. Ooh, that doesn't sound healthy. And stated, as for hearings, I think both are unnecessary. The fact that we have multiple slates of electors demonstrates the uncertainty of either. That should be enough. And I agree with Ken that judiciary committee committees on the constitutionality of the electoral count act could invite counter views that we do not believe should constrain pence or grassley in the exercise of power they would have under the 12th amendment better for them to just act boldly and be challenged that the challenge would likely lead to the court denying review on non justicia on political question grounds long story short they sent out multiple electors from multiple states and then had the balls and testicles to say, we have multiple electors out there. That should be enough, right? I mean, it's obvious that there's, you know, there's questions. And also, you know, we have a, we have a thing just in case Pence isn't willing to do his job on January 6th. It's fine. On Christmas Day... Donald J. Trump placed a telephone call to Speaker of the House Representatives Rusty Bowers for the purpose of uh, soliciting, requesting, and importuning Bowers to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Arizona. During the call, Bowers stated to Trump, I voted for you. I worked for you. I campaigned for you. I just won't do anything illegal for you. <laughs> well, but good on you, Bowers, I guess. On the 27th day of December 2020, Mark Meadows sent a text message to the office of the Georgia Secretary of State Chief Investigator Francis Watson that stated in part, Is there any way to speed up Fulton County signature verification in order to have the results before January 6th if the Trump campaign assists financially? <laughs> hey, the Trump campaign will give you some money if you speed it up. That sounds legal. On the 27th day of 2020, uh, Donald John Trump solicited acting United States Attorney General Jeffrey Rosen and acting United States, okay, that guy, Richard Donahue, to make false statement by stating, just say the election was corrupt and leave the rest of me and the Republican congressman. You said that earlier. Did not get, yeah, he didn't get his 11,000 votes yet. I think that call was uh, the first week of January, like January 3rd or something. It was it was a, it would have been such a big deal had January 6th not happened right after that. 
On or about the 28th day of December 2020, Jeffrey Clark attempted to commit the felony offense of false statements and writings in Fulton County, Georgia by knowingly and willfully making a false writing and document knowing to the contain the, uh, that the United States Department of Justice had identified significant concerns that may have impacted the outcome of the election in the multiple states, including Georgia, said statement being within the jurisdiction of the office of the Georgia Secretary of State, blah, 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 blah. And on or about the 28th day of December 2020, Jeffrey Clark sent an email to acting uh, Jeffrey Rosen and Richard Donahue requesting authorization to send send said false writing and document to Brian Kemp, Dev David Ralston, and Butch Miller, which constitutes a substantial step towards the commission of false statements and writings. January 2nd might show up here soon. Yeah, it looks, oh yeah, definitely. Probably within the next 10. On or about the 28th day of December, Jeffrey Clark solicited Jeffrey Rosen and Richard Donahue to sign and send a document that falsely stated that the United States Department of Justice had identified significant concerns that may have impacted the outcome of the election of the multiple states, including Georgia, to Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, David Ralston, and Butch Miller. On the 30th of December 2020, Trump ceased cause to be tweeted from his Twitter account, Hearings from Atlanta and Georgia election overturned now being broadcast. Check it out. OANN, Newsmax, and many more. Kemp should revi resign from office. He's an obstructionist who refuses to admit that we've won Georgia big. Also won the other swing states. On the same day, Trump tweeted, I remember this, like the, those two weeks, just every day was just an insane amount of tweets from Trump of just insane bullshit, one after another. Hearings from Atlanta on the Georgia overturn now being broadcast live. Yep, another another tweet. On the 30th of December 2020, Giuliani, Ray Smith, and Sheely committed the felony offense of solicitation of violation of oath by a public officer uh, by trying to intimidate co-conspirator 8, Senators Brandon Beach, all those listed to engage in conduct um, against their law against their violation of oath about presidential electors. That whole paragraph. These guys made these guys do the presidential elector things. There you go. <laughs> Act 103. On or about the 30th of December, 2020, Giuliani committed the felony offense of false statements and writings by knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making at least one of the statements shown below that Fulton County election workers fraudulently counted certain ballots as many as five times at the State Farm Arena, that 2,560 felons voted illegally in the election, and that 10,315 people voted in the election. Dead people, excuse me. This was an act of uh, racketeering activity. On the 30th of December, Ray Stalling Smith III committed the felony offense of false statements and writings, again for the following. That Georgia Secretary of State Ryan, uh, General Counsel Ryan Germany stated that his office had sent letters to 8,000 people who voted illegally in the election and told them not to vote in the January 5th, 2021 runoff election. And that the Georgia Secretary of State admitted that they had a 90% accuracy rate in the November 3rd, 2020 election and that there's still a 10% margin that's not accurate could you imagine 10 percent accurate <laughs> margin of error in the presidential elections like that would be that would be a problem if there was any proof of that whatsoever on or about the 30th day of december 2020 chile committed the felony offense of false statements and writings again for the following that poll watchers and media at State Farm Arena were told late in the evening of November 3rd that the vote count was being suspended until the next morning and to go home because of a major water main break, and that Fulton County election workers at the arena voted the same ballots over and over again on November 3rd, because that's something that machines can do. That's something the voting machines will just let you do, just keep running it through over and over again. On the 30th of December, Donald J. Trump caused to be tweeted from his Twitter account, We now have more votes. We now have far more votes than needed to flip Georgia in the presidential race. Massive voter fraud took place. Thank you to the Georgia legislatures for today's revealing meeting. 
It's like two days later, he's like, we now have far more votes. And two days later, we just need to find 10,000 more votes. And there's still people who are willing to say that he is fully on the up and up. Like he's not lying at all. Those people are stupid. I'm not a lawyer. On or about the 31st day of December, Jenna Ellis wrote a memorandum titled Memorandum Re Constitutional Analysis of Vice Presidential Authority for. This is a boring. <laughs> You need to tone that down a little bit, Jenna Ellis. Constitutional analysis for vice presidential authority for January 6th electoral college vote count to Donald J. Trump. The memorandum outlined a strategy for disrupting and displaying the joint session of co Congress, the day prescribed by law, um, and stated the vice president should therefore not open any of the votes from six states, including Georgia, that were falsely characterized as having electoral delegates in dispute. Yeah, they just like, they sent the delegates and then they're like, well, their delegates are in dispute, so you're, we're just going to not open yours because there's two of them here. What are we going to do? It's like, it's like punching somebody. It's like going to somebody where somebody got punched in the face and then somebody coming up and punching somebody in the face and just assuming that's the same thing. That's a terrible analogy. On the 31st day of December, uh, Donald J. Trump and John Eastman committed the felony of filing false documents uh, by filing a document titled Verified Complaint for Emergency Injunctive and Declarative Relief in the matter of Trump versus Kemp in uh, the United States District Court for the North District of Georgia, having said at least one of the false statements that as many as 2,500 felons, uh, we've said all of this before, yeah, we said all of this before earlier today. Uh, you read, read on on the screen if you if you missed it earlier. But he said a whole bunch of people voted that didn't vote. Earlier on the same day, John Charles Eastman sent an email to attorneys associated with the Trump campaign admitting his knowledge that at least some of the allegations in the verified complaint were not accurate. The hell you say? It's like, <laughs> you, just, you can't say, well, you know, some of them might not be right. On or, the, on or about the first day of January 2021, Cheese Bro is back to emailing, back to work. He sent an email to John Eastman, an unindicted conspirator three. In the email, Cheese Bro outlined a strategy for disrupting and delaying the joint session on January 6th. Okay. On the 2nd of January, we're getting close. Scott Graham Hall, a Georgia bail bondsman, placed a telephone call to Jeffrey Bosert Clark and discussed the November 3rd presidential election in Georgia. The telephone call was 63 minutes in duration. On the on or about the second day of January 2021, Jeffrey Bosert Clark solicited acting attorney uh, General Jeffrey Rosen and Richard Donahue to sign and send a document that falsely stated the United States Department of Justice had in identified significant concerns that may have impacted the outcome of the election in multiple states, including the state of Georgia, to Georgia Governor Kemp, David Ralston, and Butch Miller. Again, I feel like we've seen this entire one in its, we've seen this whole thing in its entirety before. On or about the second, unless this just happened like again, is it maybe, I keep saying that maybe this happened before, but maybe this was just like an identical thing that happened twice. On or about the second day of January, Donald J. Trump and Mark Meadows committed the felony offense of solicitation of violation of oath of a public officer by unlawfully altering, uh, influencing the certified returns of presidential electors in the November 3rd presidential election in Georgia. I think this is the phone call, right? On or about the second day of January, uh, Donald J. Trump committed the felony offense of false statements uh, and writings of the following below. This is different. Um, that anywhere from 250,000 to 300,000 ballots were dropped mysteriously into the rolls on November 3rd, 2020, presidential election in Georgia. I think Act 12. I think the Act 12 and 13. Which one was Act 12? Yeah, this is solicitation of violation of oath, which is them trying to get them to uh, break their oath. And this is false statements, basically, you know, lying, <laughs> perjury and shit. Take a drink real quick. Uh, that thousands of people attempted to vote November 3rd and was told they couldn't because they ballot had already been cast in their name. That 4,502 people voted that weren't on the voter registration list. 
that 904 people voted in the uh, election that were registered and addressed it was a post office box. That Ruby Freeman was a professional vote scammer and a known political operative. That Ruby Freeman, her daughter, and others were responsible for fraudulently awarding at least 18,000 votes to Joseph R. Biden at State Farm Arena. He'd get her killed. He'd straight up get this woman killed. Does not give a shit. That close to 5,000 dead people voted in Georgia. That 139% of people voted in uh, Detroit. That 200,000 more votes were recorded than the number of people who voted in Pennsylvania. That thousands of dead people voted in Michigan. That Ruby Freeman stuffed the ballot boxes. That hundreds of thousands of ballots had been dumped into Fulton County and other uh, county adjacent to Fulton County in the election. And that he won the November 3rd... Uh, election by 400,000 votes. On or about the third day of January 2021, Donald J. Trump caused the following to be tweeted from his account. I spoke to Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger yesterday about Fulton County and voter fraud in Georgia. He was unwilling. They didn't talk about the votes. That they just needed 11,000. That might be in a different section. Um, he was unwilling or unable to answer questions about the ballots under the table scam, ballot destruction, out-of-state voters, dead voters, and more. He has no clue. Act 115. On or about the third day of January 2021, Stephen Cliffgard Lee, Harrison Floyd... Oh, God, these idiots are back. They're back with to, to bothering Ruby Freeman. Leave her alone. Pissants and Trevi and Cootie placed multiple telephone calls and sent text messages to each other. Uh, they include the following. At 7.48, Harrison placed a telephone call that was unsuccessful. At 7.49, Harrison placed another telephone call. At 7.49, Harrison placed a telephone call to Trevian. 7.53, Harrison sent a text message to Ruby Freeman. At 8.03, Cootie placed a telephone call to Harrison. At 8.11, Harrison placed a telephone call to individual... Okay. Harrison made a whole bunch of phone calls to a whole bunch of people and messed with Ruby Freeman, who was working with the elections. There's, there's your rundown of that mess. On or about the 4th of January, 2021, Trevian, having been recruited by Harrison, traveled from... Chicago, Illinois to Atlanta, Georgia and caused a certain individual to pick her up from a train station in Fulton County, Georgia for the purpose of attempting to contact Ruby for Freeman in Fulton County, Georgia. On or about the 4th day of January, 2021, Trevian traveled to Ruby Freeman's home and attempted to contact her was but what is unsuccessful. She spoke with Freeman's neighbor and falsely stated that she was a crisis manager attempting to help Freeman before leaving Freeman's home. Just straight up lying. Straight up, full up lying. On the 4th of January, Trevian, while in Fulton County, placed a telephone call to Ruby Freeman and stated that Freeman was in danger. Trevian stated that she could help Freeman and requested that Freeman meet and speak with her that night at a Cobb County Police Department precinct in Cobb County, Georgia. On or about the 4th day of January, Trevian traveled to Cobb County Police Department and met and spoke with Freeman. Which, you listened to her? Jesus, met and spoke with her for an, for an hour. Harrison joined the meeting by telephone. Trevian and Harrison stated to Freeman that she needed protection and purported to offer her help. Jesus Christ, you should not have attended that meeting, Ruby. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to victim blame here, but oh my God, don't trust these idiots. Stephen, Harrison, and Trevian on the 4th of January committed the felony offense of solicitation of false statements and writings by inopportuning Ruby Freeman to engage in conduct const constituting the felony offense of false statements, uh, by knowingly making false statements in the presidential uh, concerning events at the presidential election on November 3rd. On or about the 4th day of January 2021, Stephen Cliffgard Lee, Harrison Floyd, and Trevian committed the felony offense of influencing witnesses by, by that same thing that we just mentioned in Act 120. Oh my god. These idiots are back to making phone calls. On or about the 4th day of January 2021, them guys I've been talking about made a whole bunch of phone calls that you could just take a, take a good hard look at at your leisure. I don't know why these are relevant, but these are in further acts uh, in furtherance of the conspiracy. 
Probably they might have transcripts of these, maybe? I'm not sure. On the fourth day of January, John Eastman placed a telephone call to uh, Rusty Bowers and uh, M -op Importune Bowers to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Arizona. During the telephone call, Bowers declined to comply with Eastman's request and then stated that he would not risk violating his oath of office. Thank you, Rusty Bowers. On the fourth day of January, Cheese Bro is back to emailing, sent an email to John Eastman with the subject Draft 2 with edits and included within the body of the email that Kenneth Cheese Bro previously sent another email that he sent to Rudy Giuliani. Uh, the brief notes of the president of the strategy, Senate strategy. In the email, he outlined multiple strategies for disrupting and delaying the joint session of Congress on January 6th. Uh, yep. On the fourth day of January, Donald J. Trump and John Eastman met with Vice President Mike Pence, uh, Mark Short, and Greg Jacob in the Oval Office in the White House. During the meeting, Trump and Eastman argued to Pence that he could either reject electoral offices from certain states or delay the joint session on January 6th uh, for the purpose of allowing certain state legislatures to unlawfully appoint presidential electors in favor of Trump. During the meeting, Eastman admitted both options violated the Electoral Co Count Act. It's like straight up saying, yeah, this is technically illegal. It's like, there's no technically about it, mate. <laughs> On or about the 5th day of January 2021, Jenna Ellis wrote a memorandum titled, Re, Vice President Authority and Counting Electors Pursuant to U.S. Constitution and 3 U.S. Codes as shown here, to an attorney associated with Donald John Trump. The memorandum outlined a strategy for disrupting and delaying the joint session of Congress on January 6th, uh, and stated the vice president should begin alphabetically in order of the states and coming first to Arizona, not open the purported certification, but simply stop the count at that juncture. <laughs> Terrible idea. Glad that didn't work. Oh boy, we're back to calling. <laughs> Reminds me a bit when January 2014 was uh, Crimea was found to Russia, the Russians found electors. Is it, was it similar? That sucks. I'm glad to see that America, thank Christ, there were people not willing to cause problems. But it was it got really close. Mostly retreats and Giuliani's statements seem to be transcribed in their entirety for this. Act 112 was definitely about the phone call. They just didn't transcribe it here. Gotcha. And they might, like I said, this is about racketeering, so they might go into something very much more specific coming up. We've we're still got about uh, 30 pages left. 40, actually. Um, these guys are back to calling. <laughs> On the 5th of January, Cheely, uh, Stephen Lee, Harrison Prescott Lloyd, Trevian, and Scott Hall placed multiple telephone calls to each other. Feel free to take a look at all these at your leisure. Here we go. I'll take a picture of it just so we can save this for posterity. <laughs> okay, that was two pages right there. <laughs> Excuse me. There we go. We're coming up on the 6th. They had election observers. They like from the Twilight Zone. Oh, that sucks. I mean, it's, it's good that they had the, you know, they at least pretended, but the fact that it wasn't even real. Uh, these guys made a whole bunch of calls to each other. Thank God those were two pages that I didn't have to read out. On or about the 5th day of January, Donald J. Trump tweeted out, The vice president has the power to reject fraudulently chosen electors. On the 5th of January, John Eastman met with the Chief of Staff Mark Short and counsel to the Vice President Greg Jacob for the purpose of requesting that Pence reject slates of presidential electors from Georgia and certain other states during the joint session of January 6th. On the 5th of January, Donald J. Trump met with Pence in the Oval Office in the White House. During the meeting, Donald Trump stated that Pence had the power to decertify the November 3rd election, uh, that people cheated, and that Pence wanted to what? What? Okay, I'm calling bullshit on this. Donald J. Trump stated that Pence wanted to play by Marques de Marques of Queensberry rules. I'm not Marquis, Marquis of Queens. I don't know what that means. I don't know that Trump know what that means. That's that's a weird one. 
When Pence stated that it was his duty to support and defend the Constitution and that only Congress had the power to decide the slates of electors, of, of uh, presidential electors, Donald Trump stated that Pence was naive, implying that he lacked courage and stated that Pence was doing a great disservice. Bare knuckle boxing, is it? I'm going to ask a... I'm going to ask GPT just in case. What does this mean? I don't know anything about boxing, so there might be. What does Marquez the Queensberry rules mean? Ah, uh, here we go. Ah, uh -huh, the Marquez. Oh, God. Get out of here. These are a set of guidelines that were established for a sport of boxing. I can believe Trump would know this, to be honest. I, to be honest, if it comes to boxing, yeah, I, I feel like Trump might know this. On the 5th of January, Trump placed a phone call to Pence. During the phone call, uh, Trump and Eastman attempted to persuade Pence to reject slates of electors again. <laughs> On the 5th of January, he placed a second phone call to Pence. During the phone call, uh, Trump asked Pence if he'd received a copy of the letter from a group of Pennsylvania legislatures urging Congress to return the state's electoral college votes and stated to Pence, you gotta be tough tomorrow. That's witness intimidation. That's, uh, that's intimidation. It's uh, maybe not witness, but it's so intimidation. On the 5th of January, Trump issued a statement through the Trump campaign that falsely stated, the vice president and I are in total agreement that the vice president has the power to act. Our vice president has several options under the U.S. Constitution. He can decertify the results or send them back to the states for change and recertification. He can also decertify the illegal and corrupt results and send them to the House of Representatives for the one vote for one state tabulation. Oh, God, I forgot about that. <sighs> this was an overt act of conspiracy. It does sound as though Trump doesn't really understand what it means other than boxing. When it says, according to chat GPT-4, which is always right, when it says someone is playing by the marquee of Queensberry rules, they are often using it metaphorically to mean engaging in a fair and honorable competition, adhering to a set of established principles. That's according to what they're saying anyways. Is that what Trump said? Pence wanted to play by fair rules is I guess what Trump was trying to say. I'm not sure if I understand that entirely correctly. Um, on the 6th of January, we're on the, we're on January 6th. I don't know what's going to happen on that date with, uh, w when it comes to this particular indictment. On or about the 6th of January, Kathleen Latham placed a telephone call to Scott Hall. Several hours later, Scott placed a telephone call to Kathleen Latham. Some good writing there, Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> During at least one of the phone calls, they discussed Hall's request to assist with the unlawful breach of election equipment at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office in Coffee County, Georgia. On the 6th of January, Trump appeared and spoke at a rally at the Ellipse in Washington, D.C. During the rally, Trump's made false statements concerning fraud in the election in Georgia and elsewhere, solicited Pence to disrupt and delay the joint session of Congress, um, and encourage those in attendance at the rally to march to the United States Capitol. On or about the 6th of January, Giuliani appeared and spoke at the rally. During the rally, Giuliani made false statements concerning, cro uh, concerning fraud um, and basically did the same thing except not encourage the others to march on the Capitol. On the 6th of January, John Eastman appeared and spoke at the rally. He did the same thing as, uh, as Giuliani did. What you understand it as meaning and what Trump understands it as meaning is similar, but it's probably also saying, <clears throat> oh yeah, definitely. He's, it seems like he's saying Pence is trying to follow these rules, which Trump doesn't want him to do. He wants Trump to, you know, do the, he wants Trump to not do that. <laughs> So maybe, I, I think it is technically accurate. Trump's just an asshole. On the 6th of January, Trump tweeted, if Vice President Pence comes through for us, we will win the presidency. Many states want to decertify the mistake they made in certifying incorrect and even fraudulent numbers in a process not approved by their state legislatures, which it must be. Mike can send it back. Act 139. 
Again, another tweet on January 6th. States want to correct their votes, which we now know are based on irregularities and fraud, plus cor corrupt processes never receive legislative approval. All Pence has to do is send them back to the states and we win. Do it, Mike. This is a time for extreme courage. Again, <laughs> courage is not something you need just for doing your job. On or about the 6th of January, Trump placed a call to Pence and solicited him to disrupt and delay the joint session of Congress, the day prescribed for votes for counting. When Pence refused, Trump stated that Pence would go down as a wimp uh, and that Pence was not protecting the United States. What's with the lesbian cup? I am an ally. <laughs> I love lesbians. <laughs> lesbians. On or about the 6th day, I, I love all pride, by the way, but uh, <laughs> I actually had a trans cup there to like yesterday just switching it up on or about the sixth day of january 2021 john eastman sent an email to the council of the vice president greg jacob that stated the senate and the house have both violated the electoral count act this evening they debated the arizona objections for more than two hours violation of 3 usc 17 and the vice president allowed further debate or statements by leadership after the question had been voted upon and they had that debate upon motion approved by the vp in violation of the requirement that the after the vote in the separate houses they shall immediately meet again what a bitch what a bitch john eastman is a bitch i'm not saying this as uh, as as any sort of official statement i'm saying this not as a lawyer I'm saying this as a personal statement from a from a duck on the internet john eastman is a bitch so now that the precedent had been set by the electoral count act is not quite so sacrosanct as was previously claimed i implore you to consider one more relatively minor violation adjourned for 10 days to allow the legislatures to finish their investigations as well as to allow a full forensic audit of the massive amount of illegal activity that has occurred there if none of that moves the needle, at least a good portion of the 75 million people who supported uh, President Trump will have seen the process that allowed the alleged illegality to be aired. Oh, this is my stop breaking the law asshole hat from uh, <laughs> from uh, Liar Liar. Ah, what, what is the... Uh, hold on. I hope that wasn't as loud for you as it was for me. <laughs> it was really loud. <laughs> On or about the 7th of January, Kathleen Latham sent a text message to the Chief Operations Officer of Sullivan Strickler with the address for the Douglas Municipal Airport in Coffee County, Georgia. It was not excellent. To coordinate picking up Scott Graham Hall from the airport. <laughs> You're going to jail for picking somebody up from the airport. <laughs> I mean, he's doing an illegal thing, but I just love the way it's written. And driving him to the Board of Elections and Registration Office for the purpose of assisting with the unlawful breach of election equipment at the Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office. This was racketeering. On this, I love how they just sort of skipped over January 6th. I know that wasn't the point of this uh, of this indictment, but still, it's like, on January 6th, Stuff happened. On January 7th, Scott Graham Hall um, flew from DeKalb Airport in Georgia to other airport in Georgia for the purpose of assisting with the breach of election equipment at the aforementioned Coffee County Board of Elections and Registration Office. On or about the 7th of January, Sidney Powell has returned. <laughs> Kathleen Latham, Scott Hall, and Misty Hampton committed the felony offense and in interference with primaries and elections. Uh, by willfully and unlawfully tampering with electric, uh, electronic ballot markers and tabulating machines in Coffee County, Georgia. So this Sydney Powell has joined the party again. She's been absent for a little while. She's been traveling about the country. Uh, now she's back in Georgia screwing around with stuff. Actually, she's probably been in other states that this indictment isn't taking care of. As of the airport had... Seventeen hundred and eighty. Come on, do it. Uh, Inf same thing. Uh, interference with uh, information machines. Decal bear. Oh, gotcha. Oh, not a lot of airports. It looks like it is a minor airport to minor airport in Georgia. To be honest, 
honestly, it's like in Georgia, I can't speak for Georgia. I don't know much about Georgia, but I'm, I'm I think there's only like two major airports in Georgia, if that. I know that the major airport, the Atlanta airport, of course, is international and one of the major airports in the world, but I don't think they have any other major ones. On the 7th of January, Sidney Powell and company in violation of the uh, 212574 um, committed the felony offense of unlawful possession of ballots by causing certain members of the conspiracy who were not officers charged in law with the care of ballots and who were not persons entrusted by any such officer with the care of ballots for a purpose required by law to possess official ballots outside the polling place. So this group of chuckleheads over here has, a, a, has ballots illegally. Cool. On the 7th of December, 2021, uh, Sidney Powell and, the, and these chuckle morons committed the felony offense of computer theft by using a computer with knowledge that such use was not authorized and with the intent of taking and ap appropriating information, data, and software. That was the Dallas airport. Oh, was it Dallas airport? Oh, I wasn't paying attention. There's a lot of airports. I, I get getting my airports mixed up. On the 7th of December, or excuse me, on the 7th of January, Sydney and the co uh, committed the felony offense of computer trespass uh, with the intention of removing voter data and Dominion Voter Systems Corporation data from said computers in Coffee County, Georgia. On the same day, Sydney Powell did the same thing, except this time for computer invasion and privacy, uh, for examining personal voter data with knowledge that such examination was without authority. On the... On some time between the 6th and 7th, Sidney Powell and company committed the felony offense of conspiracy to defraud the state by unlawfully, con by unlawfully conspiring and agreeing to commit theft of voter data, property which was under the control of Brad Raffensperger, Secretary of State of Georgia, a state officer in his official capacity. The Kolb is that tiny airport. You suspect the one dude has a private Cessna. Probably. Georgia's pretty big in the, you know air quotes pretty big it would take uh, hours to drive across it so it doesn't surprise me that they might take a private jet to jet across it on or about the 9th 10th 11th and 13th unindicted conspirator 25 unlawfully accessed certain data copied from dominion voting systems equipment uh and downloaded said data uh from a server maintained by sullivan strickland Honor about the dates listed here did essentially the same thing. Honor about the days here did essentially the same thing. This is three times they've gone in and unlawfully access, download, and uh, transmitted data, possibly. On the 13th, access data, downloaded data. Same thing. 18th of January. We're getting like up to the <laughs> we're getting up to Biden taking office on the 18th of January. Misty Hampton allowed unindicted conspirators 25 and 29 to access non-public areas of the Board of Elections and Registration Office and facilitated their access to the voting equipment. On the 22nd day of April, Conspirator 28 sent an email to the COO of Sullivan Strickland directing him to transmit all data copied from Dominion Voting Systems equipment uh, to unindicted Individual 30, an attorney associated with Sidney Powell and the Trump campaign. Act 156, on the 17th day of September, 2021, which is a long, several months later, Donald J. Trump uh, committed the felony offense of solicitation of violation of oath by unlawfully inopportuning uh, State Secretary Brad Raffensperger, a public solicit a public officer. Waiting. Hey, bro. I do everything right. I did, and unlawfully decertifying the election or whatever the correct legal em remedy is, and announce the true winner. Did it not go? Did you not? Did you? Why didn't it work? I did everything right and they indicted me. There you go. Uh, Act 157. On or about the 17th day of September 2021, Donald J. Trump committed the felony offense of false statements and writings by making the following statement. 
As stating to you previously, the number of false and or irregular votes is far greater than the need uh, the needed to change the Georgia election results. Am I vibrating? I'm talking, and I'm, all the talking is, is making me jump. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm sitting down, by the way, in case it wasn't obvious. Act 158. On or about the 25th day of April 2022, David Schaefer is, David Schaefer is back in the business. Committed the felony offense of false statements and writings in violation of that act and knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making at least one of the statements. Sitting down a vibrator. How would that work? You can see under me. I'm clearly just talking so much. I'm just vibrating all over this, all over this desk. He made the statement that he attended and convened the 20th, uh, the December 14th, 2020 meeting of Trump presidential elected nominees in Fulton County, Georgia, but that he did not call each of the individual members and notify them of the meeting or make any other preparations necessary for the meeting. That a court reporter was not present at the December 14th meeting of December presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia. Oh, Sidney Powell's back. On or about the 7th day of May, Sidney Powell made at least one of the following false statements in a sworn deposition to the United States House of Representatives Select Committee that she didn't have any role in really setting up efforts to access voting machines in Coffee County, Georgia, or Antrim County, Michigan, and that she was aware that there was an effort by some people to get access to voting machines in Georgia, but that she did not know what happened with that and did not remember whether that was Rudy or other folks. I don't know what it says about Roar that his eyes can glaze over at least a half page of lore and video game, but he can read 140 page. This is a 98 page document. I'll have you, I'll have you know. And, uh, this is, uh, th this is, this is real life sprawl. If you're not if you're not reading the indictment, you you can't complain about about politics. You you got to be informed. On the first day of September, 2022, uh, Kathleen Alston. By the way, Sprawl, this is the third indictment that I've read. Kathleen Alstom Latham committed the felony offense of perjury in Houston County, Georgia, by knowingly and unlawfully making at least one of the following false statements in a deposition in the matter of Curling and Raffensperger, a judicial proceeding after having administered a lawful oath that she was only present at a Coffee County Board of Elections at Registration Office in County... That thing. For just a few minutes on January 7th, 2021... Uh, can you read the 36 lessons of Vivek next? Hey, look, I'm, I'm, uh, down for collecting as many books as I can in Skyrim and like doing a, uh, and doing a reading stream, but ain't no one really was, uh, was up for that. Fourth of Trump, third you've read. Yes. I haven't read the, uh, uh, what's her name? Um, God damn it. What's her goddamn name? Uh, Stormy Daniels. I haven't read the, uh, the Stormy Daniels hush money. They didn't exist in Skyrim. I know, they're part of the mod. Uh, they're part of the um, museum mod. <laughs> they won't put Trump in prison, no. <laughs> you recommend reading the Schlitterbahn Bad Grimm Roller Coaster Court Page document. The what now? Um, that she only walked into the front part of the office board of elections and didn't go into the office. That she had no idea if the employees met Eric Cheney at the county uh, board of elections. That she did not see Misty Hamptons at the board of elections. That her only interaction with Scott Hall at the Coffee County board of elections was meeting him, speaking to him outside, and then leaving the office. Here's the thing. Um, I, I don't really enjoy reading the indictment but i feel i don't know is obligated the right word i feel like i need to know so it needs to be known i need to know we need to know what's actually in this stuff you know i don't know i know that you could read just a just a a blurb do i enjoy this though i honestly <laughs> i mean for real i i i am i i do actually enjoy this Confining him to Georgia. He does not need to be here. <laughs> Let's send him far away from Georgia. That's an amusement park where a bad accident happened. Oh, that would make me sad. <laughs> 
On the 15th day of September, Robert Cheely committed the felony offense of perjury. Do you enjoy this thing I'm about to do? What thing? Florida, not Georgia. Why isn't yours working? Is like everybody else's not like, does it just play sound effect? It should work. Bizarre. I don't know. Oh, now it's just straight up broken. I don't know what you did. You broke a thing. Uh, perjury. He was unaware of the December 14th, 2020 meeting of Trump presidential elector nominees in Fulton County, Georgia, until after the meeting had already taken place. That he had no substantive conversations with anyone concerning the 14th meeting of Trump elector nominations until after the meeting had taken place. That he never hear. I'll give you a random sound. Stay with me. There you go. I hope that made up for it. But the only communication that he had with John Eastman concerning the election was for the purpose of connecting Eastman to Georgia Senator Brandon Beach, an unindicted co-conspirator individual eight, whose uh, identity is known to the grand jury for possible legal representation that he never worked to connect John Eastman with any Georgia legislatures other than Brandon Beach, an unindicted co-conspirator individual eight. Said statements, blah, 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 all racketeering. The act set forth. We're finally done with racketeering. <laughs> the act set forth above were committed in furtherance of the conspiracy alleged above and had the same and similar intents, results, accomplices, victims, and methods of commission and otherwise were interrelated by distinguishing characteristics and were not isolated acts. Count two of 41. And the grand jurors aforesaid, in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse Judy Ruiani. <laughs> Excuse me. Rudy Giuliani. Uh, John Eastman, Jenna Ellis, and Ray Smith in the offense of solicitation of violation of oath by public officer. Um, on the third day of December, an inopportune for all those people. Are we, is this just going to reiterate? No, okay. I'm going to, you know what? I, I don't understand what this one's trying to say, and I don't really feel like rereading that whole thing. So I'm going to, I'm going to ask the, uh, the bot to explain this one. Explain this, please. And I'm going to move on to the next one, because I'm pretty sure we already read that. And the grand jurors aforesaid in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia do accuse Giuliani with the offense of false statements on the 3rd of December 2020 and said that, that at least 96,000 ballots were counted on November 3rd, despite having no record of those ballots being returned, and that a Dominion voting machine used them. It's still going. It's still going. This is longer than the thing I wanted it to simplify. That a Dominion voting machine used in November 3rd uh, mistakenly recorded 6,000 votes. This thing said... Yeah, that's just for electors. Okay, long story short, that's just for another thing about the electors. Um... Count four, uh, Ray Stalling Smith, uh, false statements uh, for the 3rd of December, who said that all of those things that we mentioned before, 2,500 felons, 66,000 underaged people, 2,400 people um, were not listed to vote. December 14th was the false elector meeting, so the 3rd. What happened on the 3rd? We're on page 73, right? December 3rd. December. It was a, um, It looks like they did something at a Senate Judiciary Subcommittee meeting on that day, I guess. I'm not sure. 
They're not, they didn't really go into that whole lot of detail. Anyways, Act 5. We already did that. Donald J. Trump with the offense of solicitation of violation of oath on or about the 7th day of December 2020 when he talked to David Ralston to engage in the conduct constituting of the felony act of violating the oath. Uh, another thing about the electors. Good. Count 6. Giuliani and Ray Stalling Smith III with the offense of the solicitation of violation of oath. Um, for the set accused individually on the 10th of December, unlawfully. Wait, was December 10th the... No, December 14th was the uh, electors meeting. Another uh, government affairs committee meeting. Again, another meeting about electors. Um, falsely, or we, not falsely, accuse uh, Giuliani of false statements and writings for the 10th of December on 2020. Warnock, oh, is that, oh, God, oh, yeah, the uh, special elector of Warnock and Walker, that's right. God, that was so good when they won. <laughs> it was such a nice feeling when it's like, thank God for Georgia. Knowingly made at least one false statement to members of the Georgia House of Representatives present at a House Government Affairs Committee meeting. Uh, we discussed this earlier. This is about the State Farm meeting saying that they were covering up crimes in, in uh, plain sight. Yeah, these were all discussed earlier. False statements made at the House Government Affairs Committee meeting. Count eight, and the jurors aforesaid that David James Schaefer, Sean Micah Thresher Still, and Kathleen Latham, with the offense of impersonating a public officer, um, on or about the 14th day of December, unlawfully falsely held themselves out as the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from the state of Georgia. So this, these are the uh, false electors straight up, David, Sean, and Kathleen, with the offense of impersonating a public officer. Count nine. Um, day, uh, Donald J. Trump, Giuliani, John Eastman, Cheesebro, Ray Smith III, David Cheely, and Michael Roman, with the offense of conspiracy to commit impersonating a public officer for the set accused... Uh, in commission of a crime and together with the indicted and unindicted co-conspirators on or between the 6th and 14th of December unlawfully conspired to cause certain individuals to hold themselves out as false electors. Gotcha. And the defendants named in count eight acting as co-conspirators as described above and incorporated by reference as if fully set forth therein held themselves falsely out as public officers of placing in the United States mail to said person's document titled Certificate of the Votes of the 2020 Electors from Georgia. As said before. Uh, David Schaefer, Michael, uh, Sean Micah Still, Kathleen Latham with the offense of forgery in the first degree. So this is forgery of the certificate that they sent. So uh, they didn't have the authority. So they, they're saying that the, the document that they sent was forgery. Uh, Donald J. Trump, Giuliani, Eastman, Cheesebro, uh, Ray the Smith, Cheely, and Michael Roman, conspiracy to commit forgery in the first degree uh, for the exact same thing mentioned in the previous count. Count 12. Uh, I think I'm going to skip those ads. I think we're getting close enough to the end that I think I'm going to skip those, so don't worry about those. Uh, David Schaefer, Sean Micah Still, and Kathleen Latham uh, with the offense of false statements. Uh, they sent in a statement saying that they were the duly elected and qualified electors for the vice president and president of the United States. Count 13, Donald J. Trump, Giuliani, Eastman, Cheesebro, uh, Ray the Smith, Robert Cheely, and Michael Roman with the offense of conspiracy to commit false statements. Again, for the exact same thing as in counts 12 and 1. David Schaefer, Sean Still, and Kathleen Latham with the offense to criminally attempt to commit filing false documents for the said accused uh, for the commission of the crime on or about the 14th of December. 
Yep, more electoral meetings. This is for this is for their attempt to send the uh, letter to the uh, chief judge of the U.S. District Court of Northern Georgia. Count 15, Donald J. Trump, Rudy Giuliani, John Eastman, Cheesebro, Ray Smith, uh, Cheely, and Michael Roman with conspiracy to commit false documents. Again, for the 6th to the 14th. Again, for the same actions. These, obviously, I'm not a lawyer. I'm uh, paraphrasing some of this because it's very obviously similar. Some of these are very clearly not the exact same things, obviously. I'm just uh, paraphrasing for clarity and the fact that we've already gone through 80 pages. So that's just going to cut it down just a tiny bit. If they're slightly different, di slightly different, that's, you know, please forgive. The grand jurors ever said in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia do charge and accuse David Schaefer, Sean Micah Still with the offense of forgery in the first degree. Uh, again, for the documents of notice of filing of electoral college vacancy uh, without authority of the archivist of the United States and the state of Georgia. Donald J. Trump, Giuliani, Eastman, Cheesebro, uh, Ray Smith, Dot Robert Cheely, and Michael Roman for the offense of conspiracy to commit forgery in the first degree for another document of notice of filling of electoral college vacancy. Uh, similar to count 16. Uh, David Schaefer, Michael Still uh, for false statements and writings uh, for the re-notice of filing of electoral college vacancy with knowledge that they contained information oh i see how this one's different this one says that the uh, knowledge that said document contained the false statements that david james schaefer was chairman of the meeting uh and mike and uh sean mike still was secretary of the uh of the meeting any sydney powell in the count so far uh i believe so i mean she's definitely been in some counts i don't know about these most recent counts though She's definitely probably going to be coming up. Uh, Giuliani, Giuliani. I know that she was in the first one, like the uh, like she was in count one uh, for racketeering. She's probably going to come up later for the other stuff. Um, where was I? I was in count. I think count sixteen. Yeah, all of the acts were count one. Forgery of the first degree, forgery of the first degree, false statements and writings, forgery of the first degree. This is all very, very similar. Here we go. This one's different. And the grand jurors do is charge and accuse Stephen Lee with the offense of criminal attempt to commit influencing witnesses with intent to the commit of crime of influencing witnesses of Ruby Freeman. So here's Stephen Lee, finally. Rhode Island is the smallest state with the longest name. Um, this is uh, Stephen Lee bothering Ruby Freeman. Count 21. Stephen Lee, a criminal attempt to commit influencing witnesses again uh, for bothering Ruby Freeman again. Uh, Jeffrey Bosert Clark, uh, bothering Ruby Freeman, I believe. Oh no, I stand corrected. Jeffrey Bosert Clark uh, made a document knowingly containing the false statement that the United States Department of Justice had identified significant concerns in the election. Yeah, I feel like I remember her coming up later. Uh, the accused sent a lot of emails, a lot of emails, a lot of emails. Gotcha. Rudy Giuliani, uh, Ray Stalling Smith III, and Robert Cheely uh, with solicitation of violation of oath by public officer. This one looks like the 30th of December at a Georgia Senate and president of the Senate Judiciary Subcommittee meeting for Brandon Beach, Bill Heath, William Legan, Michael Rett, and Blake Tilly to engage in conduct constituting the felony offense of violation of oath of a public officer. Count 24. Giuliani of false statements for December 30th. Uh, we, again, statements that he said uh, multiple times over that people counted things up to five times that 2,500 felons and 10,000 dead people voted. Ray Stalling Smith III made false statements and writings. 
Uh, again, that they had a 90% accuracy rate in counting, um, and that 8,000 people voted illegally. Uh, Robert Cheely with the offense of false statements and writings. Again, that people voted multiple times over and over and that the uh, vote count was suspended because of a water main break. Donald J. Trump and Eastman for filing false documents. Unlawfully filed the document titled Verified Complaint for Emergency Injunctive and Declarative Relief. Again, for the same bullshit that he's been saying a million times, 2,500 felons, underage people, etc., etc., etc. Donald J. Trump and Mark Meadows for solicitation of violation of oath of a public officer for... This is for January 2nd. Um, unlawfully solicited Brad Raffensperger, a public officer. The second was the phone call, right? If, I really, if, if I'm not mistaken. Or is that the fourth? Donald J. Trump with false statements on the 2nd of January. We read this earlier. Yes, this whole list of things, this whole litany of things that he said on the 2nd of January. We read this out earlier. Ruby Freeman, professional vote scammer, etc. Bullshit, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Stephen Cliffgard Lee, Harrison Floyd, and Trevian Cootie, conspiracy to commit solicitation of false statements and writings. Uh, they went out and they bothered Ruby Freeman on the 4th of January uh, to persuade to willingly, knowingly make a false statement concerning events at State Farm Arena on November 3rd. Uh... Count 31, as the grand jurors aforesaid in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia, Stephen Lee, Harrison, Prescott, Floyd, and Trevian Cootie with the offense of influencing witnesses, again, for bothering Ruby Freeman. I say bothering. I know it's way more than that. That's just paraphrasing. For stalking and harassing and just being a general nuisance of Ruby Freeman. Oh, geez. Oh, here we go. Sydney Powell, everybody, has re-entered at count 32. Sydney Powell, Kathleen Latham, Scott Hall, and Misty Hampton with the offense of conspiracy to commit election fraud for the said accused individuals and as persons commissioned and concerned in the commission of a crime and together with unindicted uncon conspirators between the 1st of December and the 7th of January unlawfully conspired and agreed to willfully tamper with electronic ballot markers and tabulating machines in the state of Georgia and Sidney Catherine Powell entered into contract with uh, Sullivan Strickler LLC delivered a payment and caused employees to travel from Fulton County to Coffee County for the purpose of willfully tampering with uh, said electronic uh, ballot markers and tabulating machines. And Kathleen Latham, Scott Hall, and Misty Hampton aided, embedded, and encouraged employees of Sullivan Strickler in willful tampering with electronic ballot markers and tabulating machines while inside the Coffee County Elections Office. Catherine, Sydney Catherine Powell, Kathleen Latham, Scott Hall, and Misty Hampton are uh, accused of an offense of a conspiracy to commit election fraud for the said accused for in between the days of 1st of December and the 7th of January unlawfully conspired and agreed to cause certain members of the conspiracy who are not officers of law with the care of ballots to possess official ballots outside of a polling place in the state of Georgia, Sidney Powell entered into contract. Uh, you already said that. And you already said that in the last count. We're getting close. We got six pages left. We're getting there. This is a, this has been a trip. I'm not sure how much of this is going to stick, and it will take forever for a lot of this to stick. But my goodness, she's been uh, throwing everything at these people. Uh, same exact everything it looks like for Sidney Powell, Kathleen Latham, Scott Hall, and Misty Hampton for conspiracy to commit computer theft for all of the things mentioned previously. Sidney Powell, Kathleen Latham, Scott Hall, and Misty Hampton for conspiracy to commit computer trespass for all of the same things that were mentioned in the previous three counts. Sydney Powell, Kathleen Latham, Scott Hall, and Misty Hampton for conspiracy to commit computer invasion of privacy uh, unlawfully conspired to use a computer with the intention of examining personal voted, voter data with knowledge that such data examination was without authority. 
Sydney Powell, Kathleen Latham, Scott Hall, and Misty Hampton. Uh, conspiracy to defraud the state. Unlawfully conspired and agreed to commit theft of voter data. Um, and all of the other things previously mentioned, therefore. Donald J. Trump. Uh, with solicitation of violation of oath by public officer on the 17th of September 2021 uh, with Brad Raffensperger to engage in a felony offense of violation of oath by unlawfully decertifying the election or whatever the correct legal remedy is and announce the true winner and willful and intentional violation of the terms of oath of said office person prescribed by law. Count 39, almost there. <laughs> Donald J. Trump with the offense of false statements and writings for the said accused on the 17th day of September 2021, knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully made the following statement as stated to you previously. The number of false and irregular votes is far greater than what is needed to change the Georgia election results. Count 40. And the grand jurors aforesaid that David James Schaefer with the offense of false statements and writings for the said accused on or about the 25th day of April 2022 made at least one of the following statements that he attended the uh, December 14th meeting but did not call them to notify. We read this earlier and also said that a court reporter was not present on December 14th meeting of Trump presidential electors at the Colton County, uh, Fulton County, Georgia. Finally, Count 41, in a very anticlimactic wet fart, as the grand jurors aforesaid in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia do charge and accuse Robert Cheely with the offense of perjury. Uh, on the 15th day of September, made at least one of the following statements that he was unaware of the December 14th meeting, that he had no substantial conversations uh, concerning the December 14th meeting that he never suggested to anyone that they should meet on December 14th regarding the elector nominees. But the only communication he had with Eastman was to connect Eastman to the senator that we have mentioned all this before and that he never worked to connect John Eastman with any Georgia legislatures other than Beach. Um, an unindicted co-conspirator individual eight whose identity is known to the grand jury Grand jurity. <laughs> Last paragraph. And I can I say jurity. And you definitely didn't people tell people to go directly to term two twenty six. Yeah. Don't go to don't go past the ice machine <laughs> down the hall and to the left. If you've hit the gym, you've gone too far. This is the last one, so I think I'll read this one out in its entirety. Said statements being material to the accused own involvement in the December 14th, 2020 meeting of Trump presidential electors nominees in Fulton County, Georgia, and to the accused communications with others involved in said meeting, the issues in question, contrary to the laws of said state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Fanny T. Willis, District Attorney. There's also a witness list at the end that I'm not sure why they included on two pages. That was the fourth indi indictment of Donald Trump. I'm... These things are getting bigger every time. <laughs> I don't know if I can... I don't know if my throat has enough energy left for another indictment. If he keeps getting indicted, I'm going to have no throat left. I... I think I'm going to rest my... I can't even talk anymore. I think I'm going to rest my throat and go to bed. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Thanks for uh, having a uh, fantastically um, political evening. I know I don't normally do politics. Probably will not be doing politics until the next indictment or anything else that feels appropriate to be read aloud. Agreed. Agreed, Jagan. I'm going to peace out. You have a fantastic night. See you later. Goodbye. Thanks for your time. Have a good day.